This is so fun. Well, hello there. It's Carol Dockham here with BeautifulFacesGoingPlaces.com. And we are here this morning to continue with our business spotlight series. And our special guest today is none other than Teresa Vermillion. Um, if you were to, um, if your personal trainer and your life coach got married, you would actually get Teresa Vermillion. Um, she is the owner of the Fitness Empowerment Project. Teresa is a certified personal trainer and a certified health coach. She combines both fitness and health to teach you how to, uh, how to empower your mind, embrace your body and elevate your life. Uh, what I love about Teresa is that she really combines both the health and wellness and fitness with mindset and um, yeah, really working, working with your thoughts and your belief systems so that you can change whatever it is that you need to change in your life. She offers one-on-one -on -one coaching and accountability services, helping her clients to change what's not working in their daily lives, to improve their energy, gain strength, confidence, and fitness agility, along with their mindset. I love that she also facilitates um, health and wellness workshops and fitness workshops, speaker presentations, and she also offers a five-minute reset programs to various companies, teams, and individuals. So please help me welcome Teresa Vermillion. Thank you. Wow. Hi. That is, <laughs> thank you so much. It's so great to be here with you. Oh my gosh. I am so thrilled to, to welcome you here, Teresa. Um, I know I have actually had the privilege to see you speak in, in a workshop mm -hmm. and you're just phenomenal. So engaging and so insightful. And um, you just thank are you. just filled with energy and um, expertise. So <laughs> I'm just so thrilled to have you here to help really just share um, how you got involved with uh, your programming, because I know your background, you're also a teacher mm -hmm. and that shines through when you're, you know, yeah. when you're speaking in front of an audience. Thank you. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure to be here. I so appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, um, it is, this is really my second career. My degree is in education. I taught in public schools for um, more than five years, fifth grade and sixth grade. And then um, started moving for my husband's career when at the same time we started having kids and started our family. So we had um, three kids and four moves, including an international move to Singapore and back wow. within seven years. So I, um, you know, my focus shifted from taking care of, from not taking care of, but being with children all day to, um, you know, just really taking care of my own family, which was awesome. Um, what I always, what it was something I always wanted, but it also left me at the bottom of my own to-do list. I was taking care of everyone and everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and it was really interesting the day I can remember, like, you know, I did have that moment where it was like, oh my gosh, it's true. My children are like the most, you know, that, that cliche, whereas like, it's all about my kids because I kept telling myself, no, it's not. I do this for me and I do that, you know, it, but um, it was very eye opening to be like, oh my gosh, it really is all about my kids, which they right. tell you, you know, <laughs> and it's easy to be, and that's not wrong. You know, I'm sure at the time I probably judged myself for it. It's okay. It was what I had chosen at the time, but um, I needed to then, you know, once the kids were all in school and I was, and I, you know, was, I was overweight, I was out of shape and I loved being active. And so, um, as I sat that fence for a while wondering, God, where do you want me? What do you want me to do? What's my next calling in life? Because I still wanted to be there for my family, right? Um, and then, you know, just, it felt like a really long time waiting for that direction. Um, but, you know, once those doors started opening and those, I started making those choices, it just, um, it, it really set me on this trajectory. Right. So I became a certified personal trainer mm -hmm. um, and got a job working at our local community center, which was a blast because it was um, in the same community where my kids went to school, the same community where I went to church, the same community where my kids play sports. And so it was um, just really made my community a very 
wonderful tight community, which I thought was interesting because as a teacher, I wasn't sure I wanted to live in the community where I taught school. Um, pros and cons to that. So yeah, and then to keep my certificate, my personal training certification current, I got certified as a health coach. And that set off this trajectory of coaching. Um, because, you know, I would work with clients, you know, once or twice a week, we'd get in a great workout, we'd talk about their food. Um, and if they were struggling, there wasn't anything else I could do for them or with them. Um, and it was so much more than just, it's so much more than just working out and eating. <laughs> is, you know, I is what I learned. You. It's so it much so more. more. <laughs> People are like, oh, calories in, calories out. Well, yes, <laughs> and... <laughs> And there's so much more to it. So, right. um, yeah. And that so much more really is, you know, um, how we're feeling about ourselves or what's going on in our lives, you know, uh, emotions. And I know we've all heard about emotional eating, you know, it's mm -hmm. just uh, when you overeat or you're just snacking or you're just that it's a habit and it's, mm -hmm. it's just all about uh, feeding something that's beyond hunger. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. And what people are typically doing when that happens is they're trying to numb out. Right. Usually there is an emotion they're feeling in their body. They haven't really identified it with their mind, but I mean, this is a lot of work learning this, but so, or we'll have a thought that creates an uncomfortable feeling, or we know we've got a task to do, whether we have to study for an exam or, you know, work on our next project or, um, you know, plan client sessions, whatever, working on our taxes, you know, whatever right. it is, that's not comfortable for us. We're going to try to avoid it. And, and, and since we have that avoidant feeling or that procrastination feeling, that's an uncomfortable feeling in our bodies. So mm -hmm. to feel better, we're going to go eat. We're going to go watch Netflix. We're going to drink a glass of wine or whatever, you know, we're going to go work out for 20 more minutes, even though we've worked out an hour and a half already today. You, so there's different kinds of ways of numbing out, whatever we choose to do. Um, so that, yeah, that's really what's going on there and right. I learn to realize, oh, this is what I'm feeling. This is what my thoughts are. Mm -hmm. I well, that. I think that's, what's so, uh, really cool about what you do, um, Teresa, is that you really combine that, that your passion for fitness and health and wellness with the mindset, the emotional, um, aspect because it is, they do work hand in hand. It's a combo <laughs> and they, you know, play off of each other. And that impacts us in, in various aspects of our lives, really, not just, you know, hey, I want to lose weight. It's really a bigger, bigger than that. So um, and then right now, I just think about everything that's going on and everything we've all been experiencing during this challenging time. Um, I'm wondering if you might have some tips or um, what could help our viewers out there. Um, in terms of some strategies or tips in keeping it all together during these challenging yeah. times. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it is, it takes um, being aware of, of those thoughts and, and what we're feeding our brains, you know, and I've noticed me personally, um, which like if I'm, what I'm consuming mentally, what I'm reading, watching, listening to, paying mm -hmm. attention to is definitely going to flip whether I'm feeling, you know, in a more hopeful state or not. So, you, and, and uh, we talked a little bit, like, I know that, gosh, it's been six weeks, right? At right. <laughs> it's been six weeks, but who's <laughs> counting, right? One of, the, one of the hard things about all of this was like everything we thought we could be certain about came to a screeching halt. And one of our very basic human needs was a need for certainty. We want to know that tomorrow the sun's coming up, that we've got a job to go to, that we're going to have food on the table, right? And so all of that really kind of got stripped away pretty quickly. And if you think about it, one of the coaches I follow was saying, like, really none of that was certain. We think that it's certain. But we also like variety. So that's why in the very beginning, it was a little bit novel because it was like, this is different. This is unusual. And our brains liked that a little bit. Um, for anyone doing those, that would, did the neighborhood bear hunt? You know, if you put a bear in your window and then if the kids went on a, on a walk in the neighborhood, they'd go on a bear hunt. I still have like a six foot blue bear in my living room window and it's been there for six weeks. And I'm like, this is not cute anymore. <laughs> when are we moving the blue bear from my living room window? 
<laughs> so so now we're in it six weeks and we still don't know we still don't know what is coming towards the end right we still don't know right. what's around this and that's that's why we have to keep hope hope is 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 having faith in what we don't see right so um keep that hope um but the other the the thing i really was going to offer everybody as far as persevering through this because we do are going to per persevere right and things are only over when we give up um our boundaries breaks and balance so let me break that down for you boundaries and this is a very hard one for me because i kind of alluded to like i was a stay-at-home mom first and my part-time jobs i always had a side hustle or a, or a part-time job or gig but that was almost secondary i always molded that around what was going around my family at the time mm -hmm. and I know that so it's so setting boundaries at home when all of a sudden my husband's working from home I have two adult sons finishing well one's finishing college and the other is in the middle of college and they are studying from home um you know and it's great to have them there you know especially if you're one of those who practices that gratitude I'm glad we have room for everybody it's great that we're together but um those boundaries aren't necessarily automatic. And so you might have to have some conversations about what, this is what I need, what do you need? What can I give you right now? Um, just making sure that everybody's you know, needs are met, but it's like, if I need privacy, finding a way to express that lovingly, you know. To, <laughs> Without offending anyone, right? <laughs> yes, or, um, you know, just being able to have those hard conversations or, you know, if someone else is, being grumpy or frustrated be like what can i give you what do you need maybe they're the one that needs the boundary that you're not realizing that they need so boundaries breaks um give yourself those breaks especially um you i've in my circles i hear a lot of people say we have all this extra time now you can do this and you can do that and that isn't true for everybody some people are now working from home and homeschooling their children and mm -hmm. you know doing all the cooking because we can't eat out as much or get um, as much food out or how whatever people's lives look like um so learn to give yourself those breaks when especially if you're feeling overwhelmed and again you know catch those thoughts but um breaks like simply um learning how to take those long slow deep breaths can really do a lot to just kind of it's okay. It's okay. You know, two or three, three to 10 of those in a row can really reset your whole system. Um, so doing breath work, whether it's like getting outside and a change of scenery, especially when it's nice out, thank goodness the weather, you know, we are not going through this in the dead of winter here in Ohio. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank goodness. <laughs> yes. Yes. Change your scenery. Um, right. Have a, like a, just a notebook and a pen next to you where if you're, whatever you're feeling, whether it is frustration or excitement or gratitude or um, despair or fear, just jot that down in your book, write what you're feeling. You will be amazed um, what comes out. And it's interesting, you know, I, I give very good advice, but I don't always follow it. Um, I think that's an Alice in Wonderland thing, but um, <laughs> it still amazes me how much journaling or writing those things out is is so 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 beneficial writing is this role go on a walk go on a workout move your body moving your body you know even if you just have to stand up shake your body out do those deep breaths roll your shoulders reach overhead changing your physical posture is just a fantastic way to really um just change your whole state it's just it's one it's a foundation thing and the other one is balance so this is an interesting one balance because these are with our people, right? If we're sheltering at home, it's with our families. Hopefully these are our best relationships, right? And um, if they're not, that's okay too. I know on social media or whatever you are, we see, you know, like, oh, everybody is getting along and so grateful that they're having all this wonderful time together. And I promise you, it is not like that for everybody. Mm -hmm. There will be moments right. where it is and there's moments where it's not. And it's right. all perfectly normal but my point then too is to not just um you know be all work all study 
all getting the things done and then chilling in front of the TV together or hoping that at, you know, if you happen to sit down for dinner together, that you have a good time, be intentional about creating those moments. Um, plan um, like a picnic. And even if the picnic is just going to be in your backyard and yes, it's going to be a little bit of work, but you have to be intentional about creating that balance so that you can create hopefully those. Good, and there's no promise that, you know, everybody's going to be in a good mood at the picnic, but <laughs> you want to create, you know, turn off the TV, have those game nights, have, you know, do, do the activities together so that you, it's not all just, wow, we're stuck here together, not knowing when we're going to get out, um, you know, and making the most of it and, and just, and making sure that you are having fun together too. And like I said, it, it, it takes work to have fun sometimes and, yeah. but it's worth right. it. So worth it. Right. I love, love those tips. I'm thinking about the, and I, all of those three tips from, um, number one was, um, boundaries. Number two was, breaks breaks and number three was balance and mm -hmm. i every within all of those subjects or those three tips i was able to identify okay yes we need to um you know set those boundaries and i know when all of this happened you know um i know my i'm a empty nester so i work from home and my husband is working from home as well so we had to set those boundaries of workstations and you know the kitchen, the office, and, mm -hmm. and then when we're going to have conversations and times to meet and wonderful. So yes. All of that had to be, you know, established relatively quick after the novelty wore off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then taking those breaks, I think um, you're absolutely right. Um, I know for myself, I personally just jumped into uh, work and creating, taking this as an opportunity to just get things done in my business and create programming and all the list of things to do. I'm like, okay. But then after so, some time, it's like, oh my gosh, I had a meltdown, I think two Sundays <laughs> ago, because I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I feel like I'm living in Groundhog Day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah. and I'm like, when is this going to end? So I had a meltdown, you know, and um, then of course it was time to um, balance, take that balance mm -hmm. and take, start integrating uh, times to go for walks, a daily mm -hmm. walk now that it's springtime and, you know, mm -hmm. um, everything is starting to turn green and, and there's hope in the air. Um, so anyways, I love, love those three things, those, those three tips. And I think if you can integrate all of those on a daily basis, um, we can get through this. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you know, it's, and it's hard. Show yourself some grace, show the people you are with the grace every, if we can remember, and this is a hard, it, it's not, I mean, I, I like, I love that you were able to identify all of those areas. Um, it's, it's not automatic for any of us. You know, I've worked very hard. I study this. I learn this. Integrating it into our lives is the next step of work. So if we can remember, we are all doing the best we can with what we've got at the moment. Tomorrow, I might know more. Tomorrow, I might be able to say things in a nicer way than I would know today. But for today, everybody is doing the best we can with what we've got. And when we know better, we do better. But so, yeah, we just need to kind of rest in that, give ourselves grace, give each other grace. I love that. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Teresa. And I know um, you have been doing some fabulous Facebook Lives on your own uh, personal page and um, if anyone out there is uh, struggling with whether it's health, wellness, fitness, or mindset, where is the best place for them to contact you or to work with you? You are taking new clients. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I am as a yeah, the coaching industry actually is really surging because if this is hard and um, we are having to learn to manage our thoughts and our emotions with all of this. And, um, and it's good. It's, it's good because there's not a class in elementary school where we learn these things. No, um, there's not. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and there almost should be. And um, who's not to say that one day there wouldn't be, but that's okay. Like I said, we we're learning it now. Um, 
So yeah, you can definitely find me on Facebook. You can friend me at Teresa Vermillion. Um, I do have a private group. It's called Fitness, Food, Feelings, Friends, and Fun. So um, I love it. <laughs> it's kind of a big group, a big name, but it's, I just say it's an effed up group. <laughs> You know, those are all my favorite things, though. You said fitness, food, friends, and fun. I mean, well, yeah. And like we said at the beginning, they all go together. Like they do. <laughs> they really, really do. Our 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 feelings and food and fitness are just so integrated. And and um, you know, we've some of with fitness and food, we've almost taken the fun out of it. You know, we've turned these things that are supposed to, you know, in one sense, give us some physical pleasure, and we've turned it into a chore and punishment. And it's like that's not really working out for us very well, is it, America? So no. um, yeah, but you can also contact me, Teresa at fitnessempowermentproject.com. Send me an email. You can um, direct message me if you find me on, on social media. You, um, and I'm happy to give you my phone number too. If you want that, they can just call me and text me and get in touch. That's awesome. And you can also find her at beautifulfacesgoingplaces.com. She has a beautiful business profile on our website. So you can learn more about Teresa there as well. And um, we are looking forward to having you here um, on our platform and sharing uh, tips and uh, strategies to help um, keep everyone happy and healthy and fit. So Thank you so much, you. Teresa. We, My pleasure. Yeah. Glad to be uh, here. Happy to serve and lead in any capacity that I can. Uh, well, you are the best. You are so amazing. Thank yeah, you, you again. <laughs> and have a great day. Have a great week, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye.